Hello, Whisper Land Survey Service, ALB speaking. How can I direct your call? To our kitchen? Uh, I can direct you to our staff kitchen? Is that what? No, my refrigerator is not running. Let's see. This is when having the secretary shift is no fun. Pudding, pudding. Pudding, pudding. Pudding, pudding. Pudding, pudding. Hello, Whisperland Survey Service, ALB speaking. Please don't prank call me. I just started my shift. Oh, you're not. I'm so sorry. I just had a call with... Yeah, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, anyways, how can I direct your call today? Well, of course. <laughs> That's so nice. Well, we don't have a different department for customer service feedback, so you're already talking to the right person. Thanks for this, by the way. Your feedback helps us inform our operators of things that um, they can improve with their survey calls. Or even to build up certain sections that uh, you may have enjoyed. Did you want to give general feedback? Or did you want me to guide you through the general satisfaction survey? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm happy to guide you. Um, don't worry. There's frankly nothing I'd rather be doing than talking to you. That sure beats prank calls. <laughs> uh, never mind. Okay, um, when you last had your Whisperland survey call, did the operator pull you on exit before hanging up? No, they aren't necessarily supposed to, but they can though we typically leave that up to the discretion of the operator. The sole purpose of these calls is to simply relax you, and exit surveys can occasionally disrupt the natural flow and gentle camaraderie we aim to inspire, whether that's why I'm here, <laughs> to offer assistance after the fact or to further the fact. Well, anyway, you get what I mean. <laughs> if you find yourself drifting during this call with me today, feel no obligation to answer. I'll be here chatting on the line with you the whole time. Firstly, if you don't mind, can I collect some, like, general information from you? Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm just pulling it up right here. Okay, great. We recently upgraded our system, so things should run even smoother from now on. Firstly, what should I call you? Okay. Oh, can you just hold on one second? Sorry about that. Just had a blip there. So, what should I call you? Okay, great. And what country are you from? Amazing. What is the most amazing fact that you know? Was that question out of left field? Well, not for me. I'm kind of curious to know. Do you know any random facts that are really interesting? Maybe it's kind of hard to think off the top of your head. 
working here, I'm always coming up with like small ways to amuse myself. So I like to research and find out new things. Like, for example, did you know that the Canary Islands aren't actually named after birds? They're named after dogs. In Spanish, the area's name, Ale Canare, which comes from the Latin phrase Canare Insulae, or Island of Dogs. I know, I had originally thought they were named after birds, and who wouldn't? <laughs> but that's not the case at all, and it kind of makes it even cooler to know. I bet the next time you hear someone mention the Canary Islands in passing, you'll remember that little interesting tidbit. Speaking of dogs, did you know that New Zealanders have more pets per household than any other country? 68% of households in New Zealand have a pet. For the United States, it's about 67%. Of course, these numbers change depending on different studies and different years. But those are pretty high numbers overall, don't you think? Yeah, well, I got on a bit of a tangent there. Did you have a chance to think of an interesting fact? Okay, great. I'm ready to write this down. Oh, no way, is that true? <laughs> okay, I have to admit, I had no idea about that. I can't wait to share that with some of the other staff here. <laughs> they love stuff like this. Alright, so let me just click through here. Bear with me a moment. I just need to pull up some of the proper forms and options for me to choose from these days. Yeah, like I said, we've been expanding a bit, which is nice. Yeah, not too much though. Just a slow and steady amount. I'm happy because we're still able to connect one-on-one -on -one like this pretty consistently, which is why I got into it in the first place. For the customer service feedback portion, okay, so I'm just going to say a statement, and you can answer from these five options, okay? Okay, so strongly agree, agree, neither agree nor disagree, disagree, and strongly disagree, okay? And I'll record your results here in our file so that we can internally engage customer satisfaction. After this, I'll have some questions that are more specific, but for now, we're just gonna have to go with these five options. Okay. Here is the first statement, and you can simply answer strongly agree, agree, Neither agree nor disagree. I disagree and strongly disagree. Okay, ready? When I indicated via button clicking that I would be interested in receiving a gentle survey call, I feel my needs were met. I enjoyed the questions asked, and would highly recommend these questions to a friend. Got it? When I received my gentle survey call, I was able to hear and enjoy the clickety-clackety sounds of the mechanical keyboards used by the customer service technicians. The survey call I received 
was friendly, warm, and time well spent. Mm -hmm. I feel that my survey call was a reasonable length of time. Oh. Okay, interesting. Making sure I'm entering that in. Great. Okay, next statement. And once again, you can answer anywhere between strongly agree and strongly disagree. I would have liked more questions about my favorite colors. Mm hmm. Very. I learned something that I didn't know during my Whisperland survey call. Oh, okay. Let me see. Hmm. Yes, okay. I think that's the last statement question. Oh, wait. There's one more. Okay, this is the last one. Okay. I look forward to new Whisperland survey calls and would love to participate whenever they become available. Oh, well. Duly noted. I'm sure there's lots of ways we could figure out to notify you. At one point, we had this great little bell in our front office. Oh, I loved clicking that thing. I think it's still there, actually. Sorry, I'm getting a little sidetracked. Thank you so much for these answers. It's very helpful for us. The next part of our guided general satisfaction survey is a simple yes or no section. All you have to do is answer yes or no, and I'll record your answer. Do you feel that you had a long loading time to wait before you were connected to one of our Whisperland survey associates? Okay. Mm -hmm. And would you describe the survey call you received as friendly and responsive? Did you like the associate that you received a call from? And would you like to hear from them again? Great. I'm sure we can easily make that happen. Okay, next is, do you think that unicorns are real? And if you do think that they're real, would you feel comfortable riding one? Yes, I do really need to know this. It's helpful for us here at the Whisperland Survey Service. What would you say, yes or no? Okay. Uh huh. And the second question would you ride one? Got it. Next, if it was possible for humans to learn to fly all on our own through dedicated hard work, would you want to? No, I know. I know. But you'd be surprised how many different types of answers we get for this one. Mm-hmm. I thought I knew my answer so clearly, but hearing the explanations from others is... It's really swayed me back and forth on this. I know. So what should I put you down for? Yes or no? Oh. Unexpected. I'll enter that in. Hmm, let's see here. Hmm. Oh, I like this one. Okay. Do you collect old objects? Oh, well, like... 
old can be somewhat vague, I know, but it's pretty contextual. Sometimes old can be hundreds of years old or ten years old. It's whatever it means for you, if that makes sense. It can mean like general antiquing or it can even mean collectible t-shirts. exactly. It's, it's person to person. Mm-hmm. Also, even the concept of the word vintage, like anything that's older than 20 years is technically considered a vintage item. But for some people, the word vintage is more associated with anything pre-1980s. That all depends on who you talk. I guess that's the way it is with everything though, right? Those kinds of conversations tend to really reveal who is easygoing and who is a stickler. Although, I think that everyone is kind of a stickler about at least one thing. (laughs) Yeah, like their area of personal interest or hobbies. How could you not be, right? If you take something seriously and or like study it a lot, you might easily become a stickler about it. I think I can be that way about a lot of things easily. If it's something that interests me heavily, what about you? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Alright, so for the question about the old objects, should I say yes or no? I mean, from what you just said, do you like to collect old objects? Ah, I see. Mm Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, well especially makes sense while you explain it. Hmm. For sure. Yeah. I'm gonna think about this question a little differently from now, I think. Oh, the sound of the keyboard. You can hear that, huh? Yeah, I'm just writing down little notes for myself kind of as an aside for these questions. I'm not just writing down your yes or no answers. Well, yeah, because sometimes, sometimes someone will explain something in such a succinct way. It makes me think, oh, you know, that's really helpful. It could be useful to explain the question to someone else like that. Yeah. Or even just an interesting comment. It's all helpful for us, so I log in anything that I think is important. But your official survey will simply have the yes or no answers. That's what is entered into our system. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, these are just for my notes. Mm Mm-hmm. Thank you for understanding been such a great person to talk to so far. I'm really happy to be on the line with you. Okay, um, where were we? Mm, let me just rewind and try to find my spot here. Yes, okay, that's right. The next yes or no question. right Ah, uh, so, have you ever tried skiing? Yeah, I figured that would be a pretty easy one to figure out. We pretty much either have or haven't. Yeah, there's lots of different kinds of skiing, of course. There's downhill, cross-country, etc. I've, I've heard. 
that cross-country skiing is supposed to be really good for you. No, I've never tried it before. <laughs> it's also a lot harder as you can imagine though, wouldn't it be? Because gravity isn't exactly helping you in that situation. <laughs> but still, I, I think it would be neat to try it. How about other winter sports like Snowboarding, for example? Have you tried that before? Oh. Fascinating. Yeah, that makes sense. No, it's the same for me. Yeah. I'm really interested in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So I hope I'm able to at least dip my toes in many of them. Like, I don't want to do it all the time. Well, maybe I would if I really loved it. But I want to try things at least once. That way, if I saw the activity in a movie or in a TV show, I could be like, I don't know. I could somehow relate to it. You know what I mean? I just want to be able to watch and think I know what it feels like to do that. Like the fears of it or the fun of it. I just think experiences like that add to your life. Even if you don't ever have plans to pursue them professionally or even just as like a hobby. But I think that trying new things is the spice of life. How about you? Mm-hmm. For sure. You've given me a lot to think about tonight. Like, I usually know my answers to these survey questions beforehand. I don't know, you've made some great points and I like that. Okay. The next question is, when you are listening to music, do you like to listen to one album from start to finish? If you don't mind me asking, why do you think that is? Uh-huh. Yeah, that makes sense. In that situation, it totally works better to listen to music in that way. I guess that really does go to show, though, there isn't always a right or wrong way to do things. Like, even beyond personal preference, the situation you find yourself in matters just as much. Listening to an album while falling asleep versus at the gym, that would call for very different types of musical transitions. Or even like a long car ride too, or going to run errands. You might want all upbeat and dancey types of songs, or sad ones, I mean, you know, just one specific vibe. And some albums do have that, but many have a big range of types of songs that the band or artists are capable of. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Sometimes certain albums have key moments or fade-outs between each song, like at the beginning and end, that flow from one song to the next, so listening from start to finish can add to the experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some albums flow and take you on an emotional journey the way watching a film would. Yeah. Oh, me? You want my take? Mm, well, honestly, I do both. But when I think about what I do more often in general, 
all things considered, I mainly have playlists of songs with different energies to suit my moods. It's interesting to think about though, right? Hmm. Sometimes this question can be really divisive when I ask it. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Some folks have really strong feelings about that one. Yeah, I mean, you get it. Yeah, exactly. Everyone has preferences that help them enjoy things. Hmm. There isn't always a right or wrong way to do anything. Though we like to tell ourselves that. Let's get back to the survey. Mm, let's see here. Right, where were we? Yes, or no questions. Okay. Uh, this is a fun one. If something is more popular, are you more likely to check it out? Sure, I can give you an example. So, like, if all of your friends were to talk about a TV show, would that mean there's a good chance you'll check out the show, too? Uh-huh. Oh, I see. Yeah, for some people, it would mean they'd want to watch it. Others, it means they're actually less likely to watch it. And sometimes, it's not just what's popular with your own specific friends group, but popular in general, like mm, the book that's flying off the shelves, or maybe a new video game that everybody is excited for and counting down the days till it's release because they desperately want to see Isabel again. It's one of those funny things, isn't it? Because sometimes things are popular for a reason, because they're genuinely really good. But it can be such a letdown when you finally get around to listening to something or watching it, and you're like, wait. Does everybody like this? Yeah, I don't get it. Have you ever had that happen too? Right. Oh, it can be such a letdown. But have you also had times where the opposite happens? And you think to yourself, Gosh, why did I wait to check this out? Oh, you're like, this is great. I totally get why everyone loves it so much. Me too. I guess that's the risk we run, isn't it? So, what do you think your answer might be for this one? If it's popular, are you more likely to check it out? I see. A very mature answer. I like that. Very thoughtful. I appreciate everything that you're putting into these, all the thought that's going into it. It's great. Alright, so according to this, the next question is Would you completely change your style for a day if you could? Wow, you answered that one really quick. This must have been something you've thought about before, is it? Yeah, that is very relatable. I think about this kind of thing a lot, too. Wouldn't it be cool if we could completely change our own style for a day without having to commit to it permanently? Like, we could try different hairstyles or cuts, or anything, and just try it out for a day and see how we like it. I guess it would be a bit like, okay, did you ever see the movie Clueless? Right, 
So remember Cher's computer fashion system that pulled up outfits for her? Mm-hmm. Well, kind of like that, but in real life. Like, we could actually wear it for a day. I want that. It would be cool to just try something out that's not our regular, everyday look. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I think I would like to try out having a fringe or a bangs. No, but I don't actually want to commit to them. I want, like, magical bangs that are only there when I want them to be there. And when I don't, poof, away they go. There are much bolder styles I would like to try, too. I feel like for a day, it would be fun to wear, like, completely punk clothes, or maybe 70s disco clothes. Maybe that's why people go on those fashion makeover shows. That way they don't have to spend money for a new look in case they hate it. Sometimes I fantasize about how much fun it would be to know someone in charge of like, I don't know, a movie costume department. I would love to just walk through their warehouses of clothes and try stuff on for fun. That's my idea of a perfect day. This isn't exactly in the survey, but I'm having a nice time talking to you, so I just want to ask, what is your idea of a perfect day? Yeah, like anything. Go as big or as small as you want with it. sounds so nice. I don't know what I expected. Well, I guess I expected it would be specific to you, and it wouldn't be something I enjoy necessarily. But that sounds truly so perfect, even how it ended. You've thought about this before, I take it. Hey, there's no shame in that. I've done the very same. It's actually a very good thing to do. Thinking about what makes you happy, it's a key part of being able to build a happy life for yourself. Why? Well, because thinking about it and asking yourself questions helps you visualize your goals. And lots of people walk around not knowing what their goals are, so they don't even know how to begin to reach them. Mm -hmm. But even something as simple as knowing, like, going to the beach makes me happy. You can see that as your spot on the map. You know, like, X marks the spot. Mm -hmm. So once you can see that spot on the map, before you want to go, you can start thinking about how you would get there. You can see what that journey would look like. You can think to yourself, like, how can I incorporate going to the beach more often? Or even, like, how can I bring r nice reminders of the beach into my daily life if I can't go as often as I like? Mm -hmm. In that way, thinking about your perfect day, or your perfect, well, anything, that's what helps you get there. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you, anytime you can, write things down that make you happy. 
No, I'm serious. You'll start to get a great sense of who you are and how to bring more happiness into your daily experience. Oh, I really got off on a tangent there, didn't I? Let's see. I think we only have one of these left. I know they go by so fast, don't they? They're fun ones, though. I love doing them. Alrighty, so the last yes or no question is Do you relax more when you're on vacation? Yes, I can explain this one a little bit. For some people, they find it easier to relax when they're traveling. Even if it's just a day trip, it can be simply more relaxing for some people when they're out of the house, like staying at a hotel or anywhere that's a getaway. But for some people, they find it much more relaxing to be at home own space. Do you feel like you're the first person or the second one? Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, I got you. Yeah, like it would be easy to feel like yourself and just let loose like that, right? So, should I put you down for a yes here, or a no, or... I thought so. Just wanted to double check. Did you enjoy these questions? Oh, I'm glad. You know, it really is helpful with all of your feedback today. I can't express enough how much it means not only to hear your answers, but also the fact that you'd call in to give us this feedback. It's, I'm so glad that I was the person who picked up the call. Well, that brings us to the end of our survey time. Did you have any questions before we end our call? Why, yes, now that you mention it, my refrigerator is ready. Better hurry and catch it. <laughs> yeah, you got it. It was great getting to connect with you. And don't worry, I can be on the line with you anytime. I'm just a click away. I look forward to hearing from you again sometime. Thank you for choosing Whisperland Survey Calls. We treasure our time with you because. You are such a treasure. Have a wonderful evening.